going on, man? Nothing. Nothing at all. Your writing been splendiferous? Not as good as last week, but I have been able to... String um, words together? String some words together, and more on a daily basis. Might Not as much as, as I would like, but as to like whenever, like, last week, or the past couple weeks, I've been able to get a good bit done on my weekend, or like what I can on my days off, and then on my work days, not so much, but at least... A couple of days this week, I was able to put do like a couple hundred words here, a couple hundred words there, uh, on a couple of days throughout the week, which is uh, I'm considering when, considering how I'm eking closer and closer to the end of the first draft of the current w- work in progress. So especially yeah, any 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 hundreds of words you can get towards that, you know, helps. Oh, that's good. My writing has been kind of a slog lately. It's been creeping along, making progress, but. Instead of pages a day, I'm making like paragraphs. Yeah, it's like, oh. it's, it's like the last couple of weeks, it seems like I've been knocking out two to three pages a week versus a day, which is mm. what I would want. So I would like to bump those numbers up here eventually, but it's just been fucking hot, and I, I'm done with summer. I just want it to be oh, over. I I don't get I don't get the hype for summer. But this is like the first year, and I think my whole life where I'm just like I want summer done. I don't want any more activities. I just want it over. This fucking summer sucked. It's been hot as balls, or just ridiculous tornado thunderstorms every time, like every other day. It's like I don't I don't like any of. It. We still have wood just in the beginning of August, and we still have like all of September before. It's like it might cool off. Yeah, it might cool, but as, uh, October sometime is still a little bit warm. It might cool off. I can't even sit in my yard anymore and read a book or write, which is what I've been enjoying in the springtime because... You can't breathe. Well, no, well, that and the mosquitoes. Um. Like, even in the evenings when it does finally cool down some days, uh, I like to sit in my... I got a fancy zero-gravity chair now. I was sitting in the hammock, but it was getting kind of uncomfortable in my back. But uh, got a nice fancy chair. It's got a book holder and everything. So I'm like, ooh, I can really, you know, do some reading, do some writing out here. And then ever since I got those fucking things, I got Mindy one too. It's like ever since I got those stupid things, it's just been fucking mosquito central. Like I got there and I just get bit up like crazy. And I'm just like, I don't, even with bug spray, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't even like being outside now. No. Well, and your, your work doesn't help either. No, work outside all day sucks too. So I'm just, I'm ready for activities uh, in the fall, some apple picking, Mm. some uh, pumpkin spice, whatever white girls like. That's what I like (laughs) now. I'm all about it, and you know I'm a big horror guy, so I like uh, the horror season. But fall, I like here's my season list: fall, spring, summer, winter. Uh, if our winters would just be like normal snow and not ice rain and all that shit, like just like it used to be before mm. climate change, then maybe I would be like summers last. Yeah, uh, we, summers too fucking hot anymore. Yeah, because like I don't mind like winter, like the cold of winter. You know, I just don't like the ice rain. Yeah. And honestly, if I didn't have to work for a living, I could just, you know, hermit style, just be in a, I might get a little cabin fever, but I could totally just be in my house all day yeah. for the winter, playing the snow, whatever. Like, that's fine. It's just like, I'm just, I'm mainly, I'm just over the heat, like 100 degrees every day. It's just like ridiculous. Because what, what is it? It'd be like 80 something, but then it'd be like, plus the humidity and the heat yeah. index says it's and 105. The, the dew point. It's like, I don't, I, yeah, I don't even want to use the word dew point. Mm. I mean, when I got, went outside today, I was just sweating my balls off before I even got in my Jeep. And I was like, oh, man, I'm not even at work yet. I'm sweating. Well, when I got up and, like, you know, because I start work at 4, and at 4 o'clock in the morning when it's pitch black out and it's still, like, in the Kinda mid- muggy. It's still, like, in the mid-80s. Like, god uh, damn. Like, give me a break, brother. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, once stupid summer falls off, uh, maybe I'll want to do more writing. I don't know. But I did, which was actually right before you got here, I cracked the code on this short story I've been trying to okay. get off the ground here because I wanted to submit it to uh, the Master's Review. Oh, is that the one we were talking about a couple episodes ago? Maybe. Uh, there was one I submitted to I just got rejected from, so... Hey, at least you got a response, though. Yeah, but it was a pretty generic rejection letter. Mm. I didn't even make the long list. But uh, to be fair, that wasn't a new story. That was an old story I just turned in. <laughs> uh, fuck you guys. But that also, that just really pissed me off because, like, I don't know what these people are looking for anymore, like these fucking magazines, because if you write a story that's, you know, real genre heavy, just 
like the kind of like you follow every rule of what they look for. Oh, the openings like it'll catch you. The titles like something crazy, like all that stuff uh, that, that they seem to like. Without sounding like a super white guy douchebag, it just seems like there's a very certain criteria that I am not meeting here. Uh, and I should. That has, that has nothing to do with, with the, the writing. writing itself. I think what it is is I'm probably not getting out of the. Because like the contest that you pay a fee, they're supposed to still read your work. Yeah. Now, if you just submit something and you're in a slush pile, they might not. They might just read your cover letter. But just my name alone on it, I am wondering if I'm just kind of being hindered here because I'm not the demographic that they're aiming to sell towards. Uh, so what I mean by that is, and I've showed you like the BIPOC stuff. Mm -hmm. I think there was a one magazine I wanted to submit to, but then in the fine print, it was like, it was very specific too. If you were a black American or maybe just black in general, I don't think an American was specified or indigenous, you didn't have to pay a reading or the, like their fee, the submission fee. And you got free copies of the magazine, but everybody else had to pay like $27 or something. And I was like, that doesn't seem that fair. Yeah. I mean, I get you're trying to get these people like a certain demographic, uh, like you want more submissions from them, but like that doesn't seem like the right way to but, go about it. But then if if that's like, I feel like if that's something you want to, if you're going to do, you have to have that be like, we are opening submissions. Like we want to do like, like a magazine where it just focuses on like, like African American like writers. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's the focus. That's who we want to spotlight. But it which seems, is fine. Well, yeah, but uh, but with every, with these ones, like what well, well, you've been running into, it seems like these it's, everyone it's, can it's apply. An open, yeah, yeah, it's an open thing. But we don't really want to hear from you unless if you fall in these categories. It just feels like I mean they're just gonna say yeah we're gonna read your work and stuff and it'll be fair. But when your guidelines specifically say you want this demographic, you're probably not gonna pick me. Yeah, you're not gonna put me on a short list or anything. And again, I'm fine with that. Whatever. That's just the way the publishing world works. But like, what really grinds my gears is when and I don't want to rail on this too hard. Uh, and this will be a DBS episode, I guess. But when you get into like the list, because I'll like. A lot of these plays, especially contests, they'll have here last year's winners. And you could do first, second, third place, and then like just a bunch of the random stories they picked. And if you go down and look at the authors and you go to each profile, it's like the same fucking thing on most of them. And it's so stereotypical of these magazines. It's like first, and I, I noticed this, it's like preferably black lesbian. Mm. Then you get like, and not just lesbian, just any LGBT stuff. Like, but they usually want some kind of like African American or some any person of color, uh, preferably a woman. Uh, if you're an LBGT, they seem to boost you up even more. And then it goes white woman. Uh, then it goes like black men seem to be getting shafted with this as well. I notice it's always black women. I never. And, Maybe it's just not a lot of black guys are submitting, but it does. I know a lot of black authors, so yeah. I don't think that's right. It's just like this hierarchy they have set up. And I could be completely wrong, or it's just maybe the magazines I'm choosing. A lot of them are run in the contest or edited and judged by uh, like university students, like college kids. Uh, and most of them, when you see their author picture, it's the demographic that keeps getting picked. So, you know, I, I've mentioned as a generic, like, the black lesbian. Uh, that's usually, like, the judge or something. Well, so, well, And then also, too, if you have, like, if you're getting, like, a lot of these college people deciding, you know, who's who's getting accepted, there, you know, chances are college-age kids now, that's like we're going to say they're not, they're just going to look for the... Like the wokeness kind of thing. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? They're going to. I don't. That's where I, my problem is. If you just wanted a certain demographic, that's fine. Yeah. But, but if you're, you got to be upfront with that, like, that's what we're yeah. looking for. But if you're in, just doing it because you think that's what people want and that's what they're going to read and that's going to sell you copies, you're no better than these fucking corporate shows like mm -hmm. Walmart who are selling June t shirts. Yeah. Like, you're not selling June t shirts because you give a shit about June t You're selling them because you want to make money off yeah. the backs of fucking, you know, this movement. Like, you're, you're stupid. Everybody can you're see pandering. what you're doing. Yeah, you're pandering, and I think a lot of these magazines are doing that. And not just magazines. The big publishers have having uh, their sales are dog shit, and I think a big portion of it is, uh, and we've talked about this before, like the stupidness of the whole woke go broke phrasing, mm -hmm. like the people that believe that. But there is some truth to the fact that if you're only trying to, like, we'll just say woke fiction, 
uh, or you know the, the diversity stuff. If you're going too hard into that, like it's fine that you want to do that, but you have to understand now you're limited to that audience, mm-hmm. and you have to really bank on that audience is spending money on your product. If the vast majority of actually the vast majority of readers in America, I believe, are still white women. Yeah. So I don't know what they're. I mean, I know they read romance and crime fiction, but I'm not. Quite, I don't know if they read the diversity stuff. If they go towards that too much, or I couldn't say. But just you know, on the chance that they don't go for that as much as you're thinking they are, your sales are going to be down, and that's what we're seeing is the sales are down because there's still a lot of people who just want like a good story. They don't really necessarily care about these heavy political and social themes. They just want a good story. Mm. And if all you're giving them is this, you know, diversity and wokeness and that kind of stuff, even if the people were clamoring for that and that's what they wanted, it's like the Marvel movies. At some point, you get a saturation level. People are like, all right, fuck enough. I want something else. You know, uh, you see that in the music. Like we talk, make fun of mumble rap all the time. Yeah, it's because if every song sounds exactly the same, you want something different. Yes. Even if it's garbage, you might just want it because it's different. So that's my ranting gripe with the whole publishing industry right now. Is I just feel a little disenfranchised when it comes, which is pretty ironic, you know, fucking straight white male feeling disenfranchised oh. in the publishing industry. Oh, how dare you've got guys only fucking ruled it for the entirety of its existence. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it. Like, I understand. Like I said, I'm fine how with lo- it. How long has it been written word? That's how long. That's how long. <laughs> uh and I, I do proudly state that DPW has published very diverse fiction. I think a lot of our author, we have a lot of authors from uh, India, like Morocco. Like I, I'm really proud of like. And I but this thing, I've never chosen a single author based on their profile picture, uh, which I don't ask for unless I already submit. Mm-hmm. Or I mean, I accept their work. I just read the story. I don't even really try to check the name. Preferably, I like to go into it blind, which is why I've been looking for contests and things that when they say in the cover letter, like in the submissions, we do not want you to put your name. We don't want any identifying information. I like yeah. that because then it's like, oh, am I getting a fair blind reading? Which is why I wanted to submit to the master's review because they're see they have a contest, though. And I think this you win like three thousand bucks. So that's like Ooh. most likely not going to get that even if my story is really good because there's going to be a lot of quality submissions. But the good, uh, the good thing about always submitting there is that you never know. Like you might like an editor, whoever reads that stuff, might yeah. If you keep on submitting after a while, they might start like, oh, Remember, this is yeah. this Caleb, this this Caleb guy. Like, well, like the Masters review one, they publish more like literary fiction. So I feel like that'll help me out because you don't have like the I'm not competing with the genre specific authors. Uh, like say you're submitting to a short uh, horror story contest. There's a lot of horror writers. Yeah. A lot of short story horror writers. I don't feel I feel like there's not as many literary fiction writers I would have to compete with if that's all they're going for. But uh, also like the Masters Review, like I believe they're one of those uh, blind judging kind of things. Uh, so I feel like I would at least get read and maybe actually get some feedback from, them, but I don't know. Uh, but I did, like I said, uh, before I started the stupid rant, I feel like I cracked the code on the story I was working on and I think I finally got it going, but I have like four days to write the story. So we'll see if I make it or not. Anyway, we'll get into the episode and I have a, my, uh, a small topic we could talk about. Uh, I don't uh, know anything else. So you'll have to wing it, Spencer, and lead the show. I wing things. Listening to the DPW Drunken Pen Writing Podcast. I'm your host, Caleb James. With me today. <laughs> I can just do that for an hour. <laughs> oh, this, this is a harsh one. I'm sorry. I apologize in advance, especially for anybody from this country. Spencer, the Angolan Asshole Aerator Church. I'm just uh, I'm uh, aerating assholes. Yeah, that's where you're at now. You spread them and you just let them air out. <laughs> oh, well, it's a dirty job. Somebody's got to do it. There's a lot of big buttholes out there that get really gunked up. Yeah. That needs needs airing out. Yuck. Before we get into the episode that is topic list, I wanted to bring up a poll we ran 
on oh. the old Twitter. Um, okay. I'm inter- we talked about this last episode br- very briefly, so I figured maybe I would ask some other folks what their opinion on it was and see what we got. Uh, do you think it's okay for a person to say they read a book if they only listen to the audiobook version? What would you say the... Just off the top of your head, do you like yays and nays? Where do you think they would lie percentage wise? Hmm, I'm not sure exactly by the percentage. I would hmm. see. I'm trying to think on what the average would be or what our audience would like. Because I would think maybe like our audience would say no, just because they're more focused on the reading and writing aspect right. than if you would just pull like random people who would be like oh yeah listening counts like you know so i'll go with the majority the majority no it doesn't count well spencer i'll throw a statistic at you you're 100 percent wrong <laughs> uh 83 percent said yes 17 percent said no i i think we've always been undecided like we've been very indecisive with our answers some days it's nah it doesn't really count and then other days like yeah i mean i don't see why it does but somebody uh, commented, actually, I think they retweeted it. I don't even, I'm sure, I hope they did the poll. They said, so long as content is being received. Also, for some of us that operate differently and have visual impairments in which an audiobook is the only way to absorb a book, I dare anyone to tell me my experience is any different than those uh, that read with their eyes. So I didn't really think about people that would have visual impairments or any kind of disability that would cause them uh, even like a severe dys- dyslexia where they yeah. couldn't read or read well. Obviously, an audiobook would be the preferred method. And I was thinking, that does make sense. And how are you to say if somebody listens to something, they're not absorbing it the same way you're reading it? Because uh, now we're just talking semantics of the actual definition mm. of reading something. But so what? what is your... Well, we're, Finish this once and for all. What once is your final stance on the issue, Spencer? I don't is listening care. to an no, <laughs> what? You gotta be a gay or an a. Does listening to an audio book count as reading the book? No. If you're for, uh, uh, besides the caveat of what I just said, uh, yeah, of the uh, if you have a, some kind of disability or something of uh, a hindrance, but of a full mind and body, my my gut reaction would no. be would be no. Hell no, or just a no. Just a no. Not not too extreme. I, and again, like I would, I wouldn't say like like if say if I was putting stuff out and it never got to the point of being like, because I wouldn't do like an I like I wouldn't put an any audible thing on myself. But if I got to the point to where I could get like somebody to read it, for read you. it or whatever, I wouldn't like look bad. I wouldn't be like upset about those sales or look down at those sales and be like, why aren't those print sales or like or ebook sales? It's just it's just, it's not my. I don't know. Let me throw this at you, Spencer, because you sound a little old fashioned in your a reading little, yeah. voice. But I'm, you're not, I'm a bit but of not, an old fogey. But not old fashioned enough because stories were originally told but, but yeah. out loud to each other. There was no writing. There was nothing to read. And at one point, it might have been Plato, might have been Socrates, might have been none of those guys. The one very smart feller out in Greece or Rome or one of them ancient Sumerian places said, you know what he said, Spencer? What did he say? He said, "You don't know because nobody fucking remembers because they didn't write it down." He said that this goddamn written word is going to replace the stories, and that's no good. We can't have people reading. What a debauchery this will end up being. People reading, and then we'll have no more beautiful poetic prose out loud for you to endure. Endure, because that's how it would be for me. But oh God, is this guy going to shut up? Uh, for you to enjoy around the fire. There is no more... Uh, th- you know what that also goes with, like, plays and movies? Yeah. I'd rather watch a movie all <laughs> the time than a fucking play. Yeah. I'm sorry. Even, like, a really good play, I'd be like, this would be a better movie. <laughs> what if somebody said... I'm trying to think. Uh, okay. The one play we both actually did go and watch was the Evil Dead musical. Yeah. Uh, are musicals considered plays? It's a yeah, fucking... I would, I would think so. I mean... We'll just say it is. Would you say... That watching the Evil Dead musical <laughs> play is the same as watching the movie. Would you yeah. consider that watching the movie? No, you would no, not. No, because it's a but, different thing. No, but I, I would say with the Evil Dead property, with the cheapness of the movie, it's close. It's close. It's close, but it, no, it's not. It's not the same. And that's nothing against those people who did it. They all did great. You know, yeah. it was a good. It was fun watching. It was a good time, but not it was. Ne- it was not the movie. No. 
a stage play will never be a movie the same way an audio book will never be reading a book. Mm. And it's okay to enjoy one more than the other or the same or whatever. It's fine. You don't have to pick. And like I said, I've been listening to these these things that Marvel have been putting out, those like uh, radio, like series, like it's a podcast, but it's like each each thing is like a 10-part story, and it's the... It's but it's like the full round like those background noises all yeah. like you know what I mean again which again goes into the like are you listening to that as your audible book or are you listening to somebody reading this is book. just the guy and then he walked down the stairs and opened the door to find the dead body and I mean obviously he wouldn't be reading it that you know monotone that yeah. monotone but you know that's but, also like that's a factor well here's the thing because I've listened to many audio stories I haven't listened to a whole audio book ever. But I've listened to a lot of short stories. I even uh, listened to the, I think it's Ghastly Tales podcast. They haven't updated enough, so I haven't listened to them recently. But they do like horror stories, and they read. And the guy's got like, a great Irish accent. Yeah. And they have a little bit of music, not anything overpowering. No, like, diner scene, like, you know, clanging and shit. But, just, like, ambiance. Yeah, just, like, little music, maybe ambiance. Uh, but anyway, I can, for me, can say I do not absorb that material the same way I absorb reading a story maybe some people do maybe they absorb it better but for me i do not so i can't consider that the same like if you said hey caleb i heard you read the iliad i actually only read the you know i listened to the audio book version like oh so you didn't read the iliad no that's what i would say i did not read the iliad because i listened to the iliad which is ironic because as, as, you, as you were just saying that it was yeah. originally spoken you know yeah what? that would probably actually be the proper way to uh, read, quote-unquote, the Iliad is to listen to somebody else read it to you. Um, So I have no problem with that, uh, but I still don't consider it. And I'm just going with the semantics of the actual definition of reading with your eyes and you look. And I guess Braille, that could work too because you you got fingers and still... That would be a weird one too. Like, it's a different way of absorbing. But yeah, I don't don't know why that's such a controversial topic. Uh, Our opinion that is not considered reading is... uh, People are very offended by that. And I'm thinking, is, is it just because you only listen to audiobooks and then you may, you have like this thing where it's like, they don't think I'm actually reading. I'm not smart because I'm listening. I don't care. Like, yeah. if you're enjoying if If I read The Stand and you listen to The Stand, we both enjoyed The Stand, yeah. right? Does it matter which one of us actually physically read it as long as it's the exact same text? Yeah. And like, in, like, as we said before, like, I think an audiobook would be better. And like a like if you're reading like a history book or like an autobiography, yeah, I think that'd be interesting because especially then if you have the person who wrote it doing the reading, you know, because I know so I'm sure that they probably throw in things that they probably don't have in the book. I always hear about stuff like that. Here, oh. Spencer, here is what I uh, my conclusion. It's the same as the fucking tire played out argument in anime oh. dub versus sub. Uh. You didn't really watch the anime because you listened to the dub. You yeah. didn't read the sub. Well, neither of us listened to the original Japanese version, so right. fuck off. <laughs> You're right. Because even that, even that sub is a little bit different than the actual, you yeah. know, Japanese version. That's uh, that's why my original intention for learning Japanese was just so if I ever got into that argument, I you know, you listen, you know, dub or sub, I'd be like. Original, <laughs> like what? Nihong, <laughs> what? Yeah, you fucking, you ain't no weeb. Get out of my face. I read in Japanese. I listen in Japanese. I do it all. I do the Japanese subtitles. Wow, in Japanese. Oh yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. You know, you read Korean subtext <laughs> on a Japanese. Like man, like, I fucking confuse everybody <laughs> with Russian on the side. Just scrolling. <laughs> oh man. That's something if we ever had smart friends out in the wild, we could bring up and just have a, you know, a battle of the, uh, like, just a good old argument. I, I like that argument about the reading but, versus audio. But I do, um, I do one, like, as we point out, the, uh, uh, not gloss over the fact of the, the people who have, will have, like, some kind of disorder or, or disability. Because yeah. I feel like that, because, have I said before, like, I had a, I had a hard time reading growing up i you know i was very uh a late bloomer when it came came to that 
And it wouldn't have been to, if it wasn't for comics. I wouldn't even, you yeah. know, would have never graduated to the books. So honestly, audiobooks so, probably would have been a benefit yeah, for you. Yeah, then. I mean, back then it was cassettes and maybe CDs. Yeah, it wasn't probably as as available as as like you know just getting an audible now. Well, they always had books on tape, but anytime I've ever experienced that growing up, it was the droning, monotone yeah. old white guy going. And then the Moby's dick was mm. flapping in the breeze and the salt water sprayed. And then Ahab realized it wasn't actually water that was salty that sprayed him in the face. Yeah. Chapter 39. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. But I think just because as for me personally, in my reading, fighting and, get, and working myself to the point where I am now where it's just like, no, reading's reading. Yeah. for At least for me, you know. You know, actually, that that brings up an in- interesting point for you, uh, because as you said, reading is reading, but when you actually struggled to read, this goes for somebody with like dyslexia or something yeah. too. Like, if you had a hard time reading and you really had to work at it to become a reader, I feel like you would actually have stronger opinions on the reading versus audio yeah. debate, just because like you actually no, I had to work to be yeah. able to read this. It didn't just come to yeah, me. Yeah, like I wasn't always like a quick fast. Re- uh, hell, I'm not a quick fast reader now, but you know. Yeah, uh, you know what's another thing though? Actually, audio for me is harder because I have a bad ear when it comes to like people speaking, like a- mainly like accents and stuff. I'm the guy like I'm learning Spanish. I can speak Spanish fairly well, and I can understand Spanish fairly well. But like if somebody like a like a Spanish speaking part, like a Mexican person, I go to a Mexican restaurant, and they come up and they have like a heavy accent, and they're speaking in English. I'm like, I wish you would just speak Spanish because I don't fucking understand. Yeah, yeah, right. Like I've I've very hard picking up things like that. So a lot of times when I read audio. Uh, and I get this with Irish people and, you know, people from England, like there's so, any kind of fucking accent. Like it's, I always have to like listen really hard to get it. So when I listen to, uh, any kind of audio book where the person has some kind of accent or something, if it's not like the pristine, like Tolkien English accent or something like that, I, 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 I miss things. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been getting better because I've been, uh, listening to a lot of podcasts by hosts who are English and Irish and uh, things like that. I have not been able to find any uh, Spanish podcasts that have been, like, entertaining, so that kind of stuck. Like, all the Spanish podcasts I find that aren't in Spanish, just, like, Spanish, you know, like, people with accents. Yeah. It's just, like, topics I don't give a shit about. But, anyway, I like books, Spencer. I like books, too. And I am getting overwhelmed with the amount, because I was looking at my shelf earlier, and not only have the books straight up and down on the shelf, I also have have them in front front. No, I, I have it all. It's so full that the books are stacking in front now, just uh, laying down because I don't have no more room. So I don't know. I don't know what to do about that. Uh, and now I'm getting to the point where like I need to do a little rearranging and just get rid of some of this shit and put well, it in the basement. Yeah, because that's what you do. That's the only thing you can do. Because um, uh, when I was up at the comic book store the other day, Colin was telling me he uh, the the owner of Pittsburgh Comics. Where you, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, you should check out Fine Retail Store. He was telling me about how he went. Uh, a couple weeks ago, went up to Half Price Book with like a bag full of books, a bag full of books, like you know, not, and you, yeah. you know him, like they're gonna be in nice condition. There, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Thirty four cents. Oh, not even a whole dollar. Why? Oh, that's fucking terrible. Thirty, thirty four. That's worse than GameStop. Yeah, that is worse than GameStop. Hey, see this fucking beautiful leather bound. Uh, edition of well, the Great well, Gatsby. Well, he said that, cents. He said there was like you know like a lot of like uh what Grissom uh, uh the um like that I think like the Lincoln lawyer like those like yeah. those kind of things that were like they they probably like, you, you put them out on like an end cap or whatever. Sell them for yeah, ten bucks or something. And, and they probably would go quick. It's not like they're gonna sit around forever. Like it just. It's like, damn, man, that put out any hope of me, like, like when it comes time to, to like to, to have a great calling of the books and, <laughs> and like, you know, and get rid of some stuff. It's like, shit, like, I guess I might as well just take them to the library if, if for all that for 34 cents, you know? Well, I finally hit the peak in my book hoarding where now I'm buying various editions of the same book that I have not read yet. <laughs> like, I have multiple editions of Ulysses, as you saw. I have, I think. I have at least two versions of The Hobbit, but one's an Irish, so that doesn't count. But I almost bought... when I, Where was I? Uh, 
oh fuck i was at a bookstore recently and they had a really nice version of the hobbit and i was like "Ooh, i'm gonna buy this and i was like i read it and i'm never gonna read this edition why I even get it <laughs> i almost bought a second edition of the silmarillion just to have a paperback copy uh shit but yeah there's a lot of books now where i'm like why do i have so many duplicates yeah. And then, like sometimes it's not even nice versions. It's just like, oh, I got a paperback, and then I just went and bought a different paperback because mm. they had a slightly different cover. Now I'm like, oh, now I'm just like a fucking comic book hoarder <laughs> who's just like, oh, I just gotta get all the cover variants yeah. for no reason. You know, like oh, I got the paperback, but oh, there's an, there's a hardback of it. I, you know, yeah. like, I like to have the hard, you know, the hardbacks on the shelf. No, it's just another mass pen, like mass market paperback. I've gotten to the point in my life too where. If I want to make myself feel better and I want to buy something stupid, I won't buy a new pair of slacks. I won't buy a new tweed sweater. I won't. Uh, I won't get a new penny for my loafers. You know, uh, what is it these young kids do? Uh, I won't buy a, a, a CD at the old record mart. I, uh, I go and I buy books on Amazon. <laughs> I just sit there and I be like, you know what? Do I have Paradise Lost? I don't have Paradise Lost. Am I gonna read it? Mm, I don't know. I'm gonna buy it though. <laughs> Well, that's what like the the ebooks can be like a real like like download like. But I do not get the same spike. Like I don't get the same dopamine spike when oh, I yeah? buy an ebook. Yeah, it's just not the same because when I do that, I go fuck. I'm gonna get it. like those Nicholas Obergon books. I had to get the first two in uh, ebook because he yeah. didn't have them available in this country at the time, and I'm just like. I kind of want to buy the physical I do, copies. I, I, those, I, those have been. I've been thinking about putting those like on, on like birthday or Christmas lists. You know, yeah. so it's not as much of like a. <laughs> I've already read this and I'm buying it again. Kind of sting. Just like. to have the physical yeah. version. I don't. I don't know. It's rough. Um, because and that's that's the stupid thing. That especially my version of hoarding. Because at least you're getting like more contemporary work. Yeah. I'm getting classics that I can get a free ebook yeah. of every fucking one of them yeah like dracula i don't have to have that nice leather bound edition i have a stupid ebook that i think i sent you maybe yeah. i found one a pdf and i sent it to you and it was free and there was no problem i could have did the same thing nah i'm gonna get the big fucking stupid edition i just um it's a problem and it's almost like at this point is why are you even spending money on any text that's over 100 years old <laughs> Really, yeah. You don't you, you don't have to because it's in public domain. Yeah, or that or it's like from it's just whatever publisher is yeah. ha, has it. And it's like, uh, it's like you're not giving the money to that writer or some member of their family because they've been dead for centuries. Yeah, like at least if you buy like a Lord of the Rings thing, you're like, okay, the Tolkien state is, is still around. Yeah, but if it's like a writer long dead, like Bram Stoker, does he got family collecting money off of Dracula now? If it is, uh, yeah. it's some no good great 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 grandson that yeah. doesn't like even know anything about him probably, and is a hippie. There's no hippies now, are there? I feel like I everybody's think... like the dirty hippie now because everybody smokes weed and has long hair or <laughs> stupid hair or those fucking front perms the kids get these days. Ah, uh, the poof. I hate the poof. I'm not a fan of the poof. So in summation, don't hoard books, but do because you're do gonna, you're because gonna. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, you're you're doing it. Like Mindy always yells at me, but I like it could be drugs. It could be drugs. It could be fucking sports memorabilia. It could be worse. <laughs> That's the thing. It could always be worse. At least it's books, and I do read some of them. Most, yeah, yeah. I, if I could, I'd read them all. If I didn't have a day job, all I'd do is read them. Probably wouldn't even write shit. <laughs> if I hit the Powerball, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be a great writer if I ever won the lottery. I would just write all. No, I just read. No, I'd just be a massive consumer of everything. I'd be a fucking useless blob on society uh, i'd be a blight yeah a blight no more giving back mm. <laughs> then the dick of moby shat a turtle a turtle. chapter 43 <laughs> <laughs> the thing that's great about moby dick is you could do that just make up random shit and old-timey words and people probably believe it because who the fuck has really mm. read moby dick well from what you was telling me it might actually be in there it could be <laughs> And in fact, going back to our earlier conversation, audio versus reading, I read a good bit of Moby Dick, more than half of Moby Dick, and then had to give up to audio because I just couldn't fucking read it anymore. Uh, which makes me think audio isn't reading because yeah. I didn't have to put the effort in anymore. Well, that's like we were talking about the um, uh, last week after after recording my how I. How it seems like I might have got the shitty version of Frankenstein. Yeah, that I've been looking to see, like, uh, see if I can find just like a, audio. like a audio thing on like on YouTube, you know, and just you know, 
listen to it that way to try to... You know what? Actually, that also brings up my major beef with audio, if I had one. And that's because I said about the effort. If I'm in bed at night and I'm really tired and I do want to get some reading done and I crack the book open, it's probably not getting read. My eyes keep crossing. And I'm like, you're dropping the book on your face. Why is this old man been in the sea so long? <laughs> just catch the fish, you fuck. Uh, if I had the audio book, I could just sit there like, la, 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 la. probably not pay attention to any of it, but well, I, I can say I read it. You'd probably fall asleep faster, though, yeah, because I'd, you're not holding the book up. And then it'd be over. I'd, I'd be waking up just as the old man brought the dead fish carcass to the sea. And then I'd be like, man, that was a good book I read. <laughs> And then everyone, Sounds about right. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm, we're not going to make any fans off the audiobook crowd with this. Sorry, 83% or whoever we insulted. Like I said, it, it doesn't matter. If you, I just feel like you can't say read War and Peace if you listen to War and Peace. And that would be like a fucking 58-year audio probably. Like that would be a very long audiobook, I would imagine. Oh, hours. Hours? You're talking about like 58 hours. Yeah. 60 hours per chapter. Oh. Per chance. I feel bad for the poor soul who has to read that into the, you know, to make the audio. Or then there was war and I then followed the peace. It. But was there peace? Can there ever be peace when there is war? Man and God were not meant to blah, 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 well, blah, blah. If we're, gonna, if we're just pissing people off and we're doing this aimless uh, of like, uh, you know, what's better than the other thing? We, we we might as well spend a couple minutes and do the old the old dance of the the movie versus the book, you know, yeah. argument. There are many occasions where I have liked the movie version better than the book because what the when movies suck ass, like when the movie version of a book sucks ass, it's usually due to lack of detail. Yeah. They were not able to put everything from the book into the movie or the adaptation straight too far from the book. That's usually the main mm -hmm. gripe. Where the movie versions of books do get it right is that the pacing's usually quicker and it's shorter and they only have the details that matter. Now, how you get to that point is that's where the artisticness uh of being a director comes yeah. in and the screenwriter and all that. Uh, so if I think of movie versions better than the books or short stories, I think of like 1408. I was going to say, can you think of any 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 uh, examples off the top of your head? 1408 was pretty much Dante's Inferno, yeah. which is not Stephen King's intention in the short story 1408. So uh, And that was a very, very short story. So far surpasses that at all. In the book, he's like, what, in the room for seven seconds or something? Mm -hmm. He goes mad or whatever. In the movie, it's like, oh, that's where you get way more detail. Yeah. I find a lot of those, like Stand By Me, for instance. Uh, I never read The Body, but I would imagine the movie versions of short stories probably are better because they can actually add detail. Yeah. Um, and I also, like, sometimes, like, I don't mind, uh, you know, you brought, you brought up, like, the Marvel movies. They, a lot of times they like to, you know, they will take things or they will rearrange things and stuff like that. They tend to just take the most interesting bits if they yeah. can, and they don't actually follow the whole storyline behind said yeah. bit. But I like I don't mind whenever something strays from the original thing as long as it's good. Yeah, it's when they stray and it's horseshit, like the like the Doc Tower movie. <laughs> yeah, that's just God was garbage, just garbage. <laughs> Dragon Ball Super, not oh, Super Dragon, Dragon Ball, Ball uh, uh, evolution. evolution. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah. Um, here's another example where now I can't say this because I never read the book or watched the movie, but I would imagine uh, Gone with the Wind. Huge fucking book. Yeah. Movie, I don't know how long that is, but if it's, it's under long. three hours, it's still way shorter than the book. I would imagine that was one of those instances where they cut out all the extra fluff and it brought, you know, one of the best movies of all time, apparently. Maltese Falcon, those are interesting ones because if you read the Maltese Falcon and you have the same with like a James Bond, the books are usually short enough and fast paced enough that those kind of movies could be almost the exact same thing. Yeah. Just a movie version of the book. Uh, those are always interesting. Uh, now we're going to get to controversial bits. This sh and Stephen King just seems to be fucking amazing for this. I don't know if it's because I've seen so many Stephen King movies and read his books, or if it's just because uh, he's been adapted so many times. Yeah. But The Shining versus The Shining, Spencer. Oh, yeah. Talk about a direction change Ooh, yeah. by Kubrick. Yeah. I loved both. Yeah, yeah. 
I love the book and I love the movie for completely different reasons and they're not alike at all really. And I can't say one's better than the other. And you know what I also um when it comes to like this, I heard somebody, I think it was uh it was it was some a YouTube video and they were talking about they were talking about Dragon Ball, they were talking about like the manga or like the anime, especially with the new stuff. And it's like which one was better because like uh, with all the new stuff, like both like the guy who's doing the manga and the and the studio doing the anime, they just got notes by Toriyama. Yeah, and that's why like if you watch them, they kind of do like they weave and do their they they're not all the same. Like you know, and he brought up a point. Uh, a lot of times it's whatever you witnessed first. Yeah. Like, so like if you watch the Kubrick Shining movie first and then read the Stephen King book, you, you might not like the, the book as much as the movie because you saw that first. Mm-hmm. Or if you read the book first and then saw the movie, you might not like the movie because you read the book first. But like in that example, I do like them both. Yeah. They, because they both do their own thing. I would have really liked to enjoy... To see what a uh, Cubit version of Stephen King's like act like his more a direct adaptation of his novel, yeah, that would have been interesting to see what that would be like, you know. Yeah. Well, Doctor Sleep was a very interesting it's, combination, yeah, because that was a tough job. I it was Flannery. He had to Flanagan, I think Flanagan, Flanagan. yeah. He had to make the dar- uh, Doctor Sleep novel, which is excellent, which is the sequel to The Shining book but also do it in the way where it's the sequel to The Shining Book and the movie yeah. version, which was very different. And I thought he did a great job. I love that movie. Yeah. A lot of people said it was eh, uh, because a lot of people don't like long movies. So. Yeah, I've heard people complain that they didn't really enjoy the movie or the book. And I, again, and I like both of those. Yeah, but a lot of people are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people like those... Uh, like really, really into those Pixar movies, like yeah. like obsessive about the Pixar movies. Because like, people are like, "Oh, they're gonna ro- ruin Toy Story by making someone gay or doing." I'm like, "Who the fuck is Toy Story? Yeah. I'm not eight years old. What the fuck do I <laughs> care?" You know what I was watching? I was eight years old. Friday the Thirteenth, mm-hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street. I was watching old eighty slasher movies and shit. So I was never on the Pixar train mm-hmm. or any kid movies. Like I watched The Lion King when I was a kid. I was like, "Oh, that's a pretty good movie." I wish somebody got murdered. Well. Well, especially actually, Simba, uh, Simba's well, dad did. Well, especially for us, the only the only Disney movies for us when we were younger were Aladdin and Lion King. Everything else was was princesses and yeah. like you know girl girly stuff. You know, so those were like that's why whenever Disney got bought Marvel and then Star Wars, it's like oh now they got the the boy market too which sounds yeah. creepy <laughs> they, they got, got all the boys. they got all the boys now but they got the little boys but yeah i don't uh, uh i don't yeah well is there any you know book or movie any of you prefer actually have we get an example of a shitty movie that did not do well with the book besides the dark tower mm. I'm trying to think uh I like Sin City because that pretty much followed, and that's why I like Watchmen too. Yeah. It pretty much followed the book. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Whatever. You, if you if you didn't like the movie, you probably wasn't a fan. That's of why I didn't the understand book. people said they hated the the Watchmen movie, but they loved the book. It's like it's the same fucking thing. It is. It's it, it other is. than the ending, just added a couple more cities that got blown up. That was yeah. it. Which actually made more sense mm-hmm. because people around the world would care more if it was all different. Anyway. Fuck, I can't see the problem is when I see like a bad movie based off a book, I just forget about it forever. Yeah. I don't I don't harp on that. See, I, I haven't read I, I didn't read Pet Cemetery yet, so I can't judge I didn't like either of the movies. Yeah. I mean all I I can think of like is like, you know, like the good like Stephen King adaptations like the like the the Green Mile and Shawshank Redemption and um uh I got no this is, I actually thought Hellraiser was better than the Hellbound Heart. That the movie was better than the uh, book. Okay. Oh, what was the other? There's another property. Ah, fuck. I wish we would have had a list for this. I can't. Th- I'm, and I'm sure there's people that could think off the top of their head just really bad movies based off of books, but I, I, I don't. Again, I also don't read a lot of the books that seem to be made, made into in, shit. Yeah, movies, right. Yeah. Which is weird when they do. Um, now, you're. I know you'll disagree with this. I didn't like the Dreamcatcher movie. But yeah. I, but I didn't read the book. That's another one where I've heard people like you like both. Yeah, that's, that has shit on both, and like, yes, they're not the greatest 
I think he wrote that book shortly after his accident. Like yeah. I think that was one of the first things he really really written, and I think like you can kind of that plays a part into it. But I I enjoyed the book, and then what well, what I I just I love the cast of the Dreamcatcher movie. Yeah, it was, it, I will give it that. The, the, the yeah. cast is enough like that it could be just them just shitting on the floor for an hour and a half, and I'm like, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> It'd be a much different movie. <laughs> What do you feel about plays that get made into movies? Like all the Shakespeare stuff. Uh, I don't... Um, The movie O, based off Othello, I thought was really good. I watched that when I was like a kid. Yeah. That was... Uh, they modernized it. I mean, I probably haven't watched or like a lot of that stuff just because that's not really what I've ever really been into. Uh, I would have to say it's all in... Well, in Shakespeare, is it like a lot of singing? Because, like, you know, like when they did Romeo and Juliet, there was, you know, with Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't think there's any singing. You know what I mean? Because wasn't there singing in the movie? Well, that's what we brought up earlier. Is a musical considered a play? I don't, the plays, I don't think they're singing. I, no. They do singing in like yeah. modern versions of stuff, but fuck that movie, too. That, what was that? Uh, what was it, Romeo and Juliet? Wasn't it like Romeo plus Juliet? Shakespeare in Love? Oh, yeah. That's or, maybe that's a different, that's a Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm thinking whatever the fuck movie, goddamn Harvey Weinstein put all his money behind and made them win, I think it was over Saving Private Ryan or something oh, like that. Wow. I was like, fuck you, stupid. And that was like Pulp Fiction, I think, lost too. It was like some fucking great movies that lost to this, like Shakespeare in Love. No, there was a Leonardo DiCaprio, Romeo and Juliet movie, and I remember that was like stupid too. I don't and then it was like set in modern times because that's also the thing too they like always make it set in modern times yeah like are you gonna do a period piece or modernize it and like that you know depending on which one you, you decide to do is a whole nother can of worms we're gonna have to start reading a lot of Shakespeare to nope we could just do uh, one no. play like a month how long is it how long is is an average Shakespeare Shakespeare work I just assume that they're long no they can't all be long you ring you. How about we'll split it up? You read King Lear, I'll read Hamlet. Uh, you read Taming Another Shrew, I'll read A Midsummer's Night or whatever. Like, um, you know, we can. I'm gonna read it one day. I'm gonna be smarter than you. You already are. I think I'm gonna read Paradise Lost first, just so I could. Whenever they always have the debate, who's actually better, Shakespeare or Milton? I'm like Milton. Mm. Fucking Milton's way better. And I won't know because I never read Shakespeare. <laughs> I just read Milton. <laughs> And only one work. I don't even know if he has other work. It's kind of like the the king or do or, or coons king because I haven't read any coons. King is a far superior author, and I will die on that hill. <laughs> have you ever read coons? Shut up about it. <laughs> of course not. I would never besmirch my eyes on the pages of a coons. S- uh, smother my eyes with that. Ooh, ooh! How dare you even ask, you fucking barbarian? Um, come foolery. My only. Notion of Kunt sucks is my mom said he uses too many descriptions. Eh, I mean, she didn't like him. She said to talk about Lee for an hour or something. No, uh, I don't know if that's true, but she was always a big Stephen King fan, so I feel like if she, she can, you might have been. Yeah, it might have been a little <clears throat> colored one way or the other. Yeah, I guess we should end this, Spencer. We are going a lot longer than what I thought we would be doing at the beginning of this episode. What a rebel rousing. Rebel rousing. Rebel rousing. Rebel, 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 rebel. Queequeg went below deck, and he had a hunger for meat, Spencer. Meats, you say? But there was only one kind of meat Queequeg likes, as he's a cannibal. I didn't say it. Human meat. Human meat. You know where he got that meat? The first mate, Bishop Donahue. That's not a real name in the book. The Bishop Donahue was sleeping. Actually, I think uh, Cyrus Smith is a person. Cyrus Smith. <laughs> He heaved his head with a cleaver and betwixt his buttocks with... Okay. There was a lot of man cuddling in the beginning of that book. And I kind of <laughs> liked it. It made me feel bad that there's no man cuddling. Uh, anyway, if you folks want to check out our works that for some reason doesn't have a lot of man cuddling. I don't think I wrote too many. I'm going to have to work on that. Uh, you go to drunkenpenwriting.com. Uh, at, maybe you you write those and then that's what you submit. Mm, yes, the yeah, ma- yeah, the man color one. That probably would get me awards. I would a Hugo for that. Man hugging in space. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you folks like the things we do, uh, review. All I can think is just broke back mountain in space. It wouldn't be broke back mountain. It'd be broke back moon. Moon. That's a very generic. Broke back crater. Broke back black hole. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, if you like what we do, a uh, review would be nice. You can do it on iTunes. Five stars. Why the fudge not? Give us six. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, and that's at Drunk Pen Writing. Uh, Instagram and Facebook, at Drunk Pen Writing. We have pictures from our wine tasting on Instagram. Uh, and like I said, review us so we can get more in the algorithm because our numbers have been fluctuating. I don't like it. Like we have some, like every time we have like a really good episode, at least I feel it's good. I laugh while I, you know, edit it and stuff. So this gets like fucking drop in, like not quality, drop in uh, listeners. And then they don't pick back, back up for that episode for like a couple weeks. It's like, I must be dropping these episodes at the wrong time. Our shit episodes seem to go fucking through the roof for some reasons. I don't know. Uh, so what you're saying is we need to do more shit. It's all shit like this. This episode might get a lot of reviews. I'll probably title it something like fancy lasses and sexy guys. <laughs> Gus's. I feel like I've been very old fashioned today in this episode. Uh, I think it started when I was talking about my slacks. Anyway, that didn't help. No. So uh, we'll check you out next time. Uh, hopefully, you check us out next time. By the way, even if you don't, we will be checking you out. Especially yeah. Spencer. Oh, and it's only fans. Uh, yeah. What were you? Not Arabian. Uh, Angolan. Uh, uh, Ash Raider. No, you weren't the Ass. That was a long time ago. You, were the you couldn't have been an Ass Raider. That's, that's not alliteration. Or, you were the. Angolian asshole, not Ooh, just ass, ass, yeah, ass the whole of the ass, uh, which also doesn't it doesn't Bump. have to be a human hole. It could have been a donkey. Yeah, yeah you're aerating donkey, Spencer. Uh, that's all. Yeah, that's what it is. Actually, you don't call a donkey an asshole. No, you just call it an ass. Yeah. So yeah, you're just human buttholes are being blown in the wind by Spencer Church at his OnlyFans. The Angolan ass <laughs> hole. <laughs> Thank God. You didn't need a demonstration. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to say it. Have a lovely time living, folks. <laughs>